Hi, welcome to Life in the Bottle, Season 1, Episode 38. 38. I'm Mitch, Kyle Way over there, Juan, Cody. Today we're here to talk about not one, but two wines. Like we're going to start... Double. Yep, double down. Uh, we're going to start in Italy, uh, more specifically... In Piedmont. And even more specifically... Oh, we're in the communes of Barolo and Castiglione Filetto. This is the 2015 Francesca Rinaldi Barolo Normale. Fantastic. All Nebbiolo, folks. All Nebbiolo all the time. That's right. So let's just, let's just hit the bullet points real quick. Um, production, these guys started mm. making wine in 1870s. 1870. Okay. Yeah. This is um, old school. One of the first producers to start making wine in Barolo from Nebbiolo. So kind of a big deal. Um, same family owns it as of right now. That's right. Isn't yep. it a great granddaughter or something that's yep. running it? Yep, it's Paula right. and Pira. Okay. And uh, they're, they've kind of kept everything strictly traditional. There is no new oak in the winery right now. Um, sort of the one nod to modern production is fermentation in stainless steel over the course of 20 days. Everything gets put into old Slovenian oak casks um, called Boti. And uh, where it stays for three years and turns into this lovely Barolo. Big ol' casks. Yeah. Airbnb big casks. style casks, yes. if you will. Thank yes. you. I was waiting for that. Large was, ovular cla- casks. I wasn't going to let that go by. Thank you. Oh, it smells great. Dude, right in the glass, like, look at that wine. It's beautiful. Absolutely It, it does. And one other thing worth mentioning. Did we mention it's organic? Or was oh, that yeah. just. They're practicing yeah. organic. Winner, winner. Which is. Which is Both important. ones today are. Practicing or certified organic. Yeah. All right, let's get in the glass. Nose is absolutely stunning. And dried it comes cherries. right out of the glass at you. Right, yeah, dried lovely. cherries, lovely dried, dried roses. Clear. Yeah, nice garnet color, super clear. Very heady nose. Cherry, a little spice in there, like that dry, mm. you know, dusty, almost a little leathery type of thing going mm-hmm. on. Yep. Some dried earth, that dried mm. floral, dried rose yeah. kind of thing. And violets, dried violets. Textbook. Mm. Yeah. And textbook on the palate too, for that matter. And the interesting thing is, this is the second take, and the wine's been in the decanter. It's, it's opened up. It's changed. Yeah, it has. Really it's remarkable. In the, in the 15 yeah. minutes, yeah. Mm. Even more right. approachable, <laughs> which a lot of people don't, you know, when you think of like a young Barolo, you don't think that it's approachable now. You don't think approachable. Wow. Right. No, exactly. Um, but this is really, it really... Just, it just unraveled, like, over right. the first, like, 10 minutes. Right. That's and it awesome. was it was a little chewy to begin with, but not unpleasantly so. It was yeah. still balanced and structured in a way that was right. absolutely beautiful to drink. And it's not a really like, pretty. Go ahead, Juan. And I was gonna say, not like the tannin isn't still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yep. But it's now it's just like wonderfully round mm-hmm. and integrated. And well, this singing. is this is definitely a food one. Good food yeah, one. Yeah, sure. Incredible food sure. one. What are um, we thinking? I'm going asabuco because that's like one of my favorite things. Oof, that's great. Okay. okay. How about okay. you? Uh, I would go porchetta. Um, I think that cherry fruit in there, that tartness, would go really beautifully with some pork. Um, and then that herbaceous kind of earthiness with whatever you're putting in the filling for that pork head, it would be absolutely mm, stunning. Mm, nice. Mm, no, How about yourself there, Juan? Uh, I'm thinking oven roasted wild mushroom risotto. Classic <sighs> risotto. All that cheese in the end. Yeah, for sure. Stir it all in. I like it. Well, those, those are all textbook, but I think... Um, just like a nice, fine, delicate cut of steak is not to be overlooked. There's a lot of tannin here, mm-hmm. but it's delicate tannin, pretty mm-hmm. tannin. Sure. Maybe like filet mignon or beef wellington. Yeah. I'm down. Absolutely. Or <laughs> a little pizza, pizza, maybe? It does seem to be a thing pizza, we do. How do you like them apples? It's Thursday, after all. All right. Our viewers uh, are all wondering, are they going to pull out a pizza? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not just one, because we have a second one to do, too, so. Hmm. I'm in on that. Um, mm-hmm. Either way, Whatever you're pairing it with, it's a stunning food wine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And ready to drink now. It's yep. one of those Barolos. You could hold on to this for you know 15 plus years, mm-hmm. but it's a really satisfying nice drink now. Especially if you put it in one of these, decanter, mm-hmm. let it breathe a little bit, it will unravel. And it's super satisfying. And it doesn't need long. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm still uh, I'm still amazed on the difference in 10 minutes mm-hmm. and the decanter's made. Yeah. So, mm, good pie. Great food wine. Good call. Mm. Here's to pizza and wine Thursday. To pizza and wine Thursday. Stay tuned for wine number two.